Hi everybody, this is uh, BMD, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the collision library that I put together, which I'm just showing you here in a really basic form. This is an Enigma unit with a gravity collider sphere around it, which is pulling these planet, you know, runes around it in a three-dimensional pattern, and based on how they, uh, how they've been configured velocity. It's not a lot of code, but it's just something you can do with it. Uh, this package is part of my general physics library, of which I've updated a little bit, but, you know, I've got another video on that, which is still more or less in date. So let's just look at some of the other stuff we can do. So this is another um, thing you can do with the library. What you're seeing here is a spherical collider, though I'm representing it as a circle around Abaddon, because it's simpler, and I'm not going to do any actual three-dimensional stuff after that initial display. Um, I've got two, you know, units here. I've got a, you know, a headless, horseless Abaddon, but whatever, and a Viper that I'm going to use as kind of dummy units, uh, and my Abaddon main unit, and these boxes you're seeing here, these are box colliders. Uh, the green one, this is a blocker, a uh, block collider, so when I try and move through it, it kicks me out, it doesn't let me do it from any side, and, um, you know, this is this, uh, the drawing is just a representation of where the uh, blind collider is. The drawing is not technically related. Um, I just uh, handled it there. This uh, purple one is also set to be blocking, but it's in fact a reflection collider. And so if I were to collide with this at, you know, some rate while sliding around or something like that, or some unit that it's configured to collide with hits it, it will get reflected back normal to the surface that it collides with. However, I've also configured this one to act as a blocker as well. You don't have to do that, you can make it not a blocker and then it would, you know, you could technically pass through it if you go slowly enough or have enough acceleration that it doesn't reflect back. Um, but yeah, this one's a blocker. Um, the sphere around Abaddon here is a blocker, which I have given a test because all of these colliders are just profiles that you can configure to with various tests and actions, pre-action, post-action. I've configured it to be a, um, a blocker against these two units. If I had other units in the game, they would not be blocked by this. Only these two units are blocked. Um, so, go to the next one. This one is, I've taken the same blocking collider, actually, this one, and what I've changed is a parameter on it that is uh, move self. So, instead of moving the enemy Viper, what it's doing is it's actually moving the Abaddon and blocking him from coming into contact with either of these. It's still the single collider represented in red, uh, the red sphere, but what it effectively has done is created sort of two colliders with the, um, the Viper and the headless Abaddon. So that, you know, I can't, on this Abaddon, I can make it through if there's a gap, but if there's no gap, I can't make it through, I'm stuck. Um, and so that's a single collider that's kind of acting almost as two. And this is important because colliders aren't the cheapest things in the world, so sometimes you got to think about how it's best to set them up so that they're, you know, doing what you want them to do, but not necessarily uh, taking as much uh, CPU processing time. Uh, this is just showing a sample of the same thing, but I've now changed the single uh, collider to uh, half the radius, all of which is configurable, of course. Um, and you can see that everything still operates accordingly. Now, what I've done is I've turned on a projectile cannon effectively. What I'm firing now are unit-based projectiles that use my physics library from Abaddon. They shoot out at a rate of, I don't know, like a thousand units per second or something like that, and they're configured to accelerate towards the... Um, uh, the Viper here. However, they uh, they each are um, have a collider on them, which is a deletion collider. So if they collide with what they uh, have a test for, which in this case is the Viper or this headless Abaddon, if they collide with them, then uh, you can see that uh, when it hits this circle, they get deleted. And because of the pre-action, post-action system, you can actually, you know, latch that and say in a pre-action, I see that I collided with this guy, maybe I'll do some damage explode, particle effects, maybe I'll generate some more, uh, you know, units or whatever. Um, but these are also set up to work with these um, these blockers right here. So, you can see that against this, um, this green uh, blocking box that they just go up alongside of it until they can get around it, and if they hit the, um, the purple or pink box here, they reflect, which is how they're supposed to be. You see this guy back here is trying to get to the Viper, but he keeps bouncing off of the, this block and getting stuck blocked by that one. But since he's still accelerating towards the Viper, when I move him out here, these, uh, 
the uh, the projectiles respond accordingly. It's kind of like a little my own tracking projectile system, honestly. But again, this is all entirely configurable. Uh, all right, so now we're gonna swap this up and we're gonna create this you know little funnel kind of thing. Um, for the, they're still going to the Viper and everything, but instead of having the blocking one over here, I made this one. You can see that you can do these uh, box colliders on an angle, they're not linked to the grid nav or anything else like that. Um, this one is still acting as a, a blocker, but it also now, you can see, yeah, it, and I can see, you can see I get the bouncing off of them. Uh, the bouncing is configurable to have a certain multiplier, so that right now these are rebounding and losing no momentum whatsoever. They have a multiplier of one, but you could make that smaller and then they would slow down by bouncing, or you can make it higher and then they bounce and gain momentum. And if I did that, then you'd see some really crazy accelerating stuff going here. It might even fire out the other side. But in the end, it's still gonna get to the Viper. And so you can see it's still tracking the Viper, so if I move over here, then they're gonna start you know, just, yeah, getting a little caught up and bouncing. Um, we can combine certain things. So now this one is, um, I have the uh, blocking sphere engaged again. You can see the, uh, this Abaddon can't make it through. Um, but, and I, it's still blocking the projectiles. So the projectiles have to go around me, um, around the blocker. But of course they still obey all the other rules that, you know, they have, and, you know, I'm just I'm adding this up as I go along. Um, now, this is the first gravity collider besides the Enigma. So in this per pink sphere or whatever is technically gravity, you can see that he's actually getting pulled in here, this Viper. Uh, it's it affects these projectiles as well, but since they have their own acceleration, you think of it like a rocket boost or something like that, they don't get that affected. Um, the gravity in this case is done as an R-squared gravity, which is, you know, how you might expect it. So. The farther you are out, the lower you go, and you have this fall-off range. But you see, as he gets closer and closer, the gravity really picks up because of the R-squared. So it's actually hard for him to escape the gravity well, whereas for the Viper, it's not that hard. Um, and uh, yeah, this is the force is obviously configurable, the radius is configurable. Um, you can also configure whether you want it to be linear, which would give it, you know, more of a, yeah, a linear force uh, instead of a, you know, exponential or not, quadratic, um, uh, force and this is now actually this I believe is actually linear but I've also set up a what I, what's called a full effect radius so by the time that he reaches here he's now under a full force it doesn't matter how close he gets he's taking the full force of gravity regardless of you know how close he gets in fact this is too strong for him to even get out of the well um, whereas the Viper he can still stay out of the well but if he gets too close you can see he's it's a, a linear acceleration is going from the pink to the purple and, you know it's, it's out here it's like zero hammer units per second squared and here and beyond it's a thousand hammer units per second squared or something like that adds up so now this is um now what we've got is a still a single gravity uh, sphere collider and we have uh the max radius the full radius and uh this green now, this is the minimum radius. And so you can see inside of this, it's like the eye of the storm. There's no gravity at all under uh, that, that's being, that's affecting these units. But once I hit the green, he gets starts getting pulled and he starts getting pulled hard because this is again, the full radius. So neither of these guys I think can actually make it out of here without assistance. If I move the gravity well away, then he can in fact get out. And now he's, you know, he's made it away, he's free. Um, but this guy yeah, is still stuck in this eye of the storm. All right, so this is a repulsion collider. So it's basically the inverse of the gravity. It's also done on R squared, I believe. So as I get closer and closer, I get repelled away yeah, more quickly. Um, also is working on the projectiles and stuff. But again, all the same settings are available, uh, full force distance, a minimum effect area, uh, and you know the, the total uh, is just fine. Uh, this is a reflect um, collider, so this is going to take the, you know, any units that come in here, um, or any units that are again configured in the test, so, uh, and it's going to reflect them off, so, if I can do this again, there we go, so you can see it hits me, it reflects off the normal of the sphere, and, you know, but then continues on its way, uh, this, yeah, you can use for some, but this is not a momentum collider, which I think is actually next on the list, it's just reflection. I don't the the Abaddon here the the collider itself does not pick up any um, momentum from from this. This is now a momentum collider, and you can see when I, when 
when these things collide, they hit Abaddon and yeah, knock him all around. Um, they themselves, of course, take it, uh, knocked around as well. Um, and in this case, you can set a configurable mass for the uh, collisions. And right now, the Abaddon and the, uh, uh, the projectiles have the same mass. I'm going to change that now so that they only have 5%, or not quite yet, next round. So this is actually, right, this is just uh, the blocker. Oh, no, this is it. All right, so they have 5% mass now compared to the Abaddon. Um, and so they, they still push them around a little bit, as you would expect, but realistically, they don't push them very much. Um, and yeah, so there you go. They're pushing them a bit and push them out, and he does pick up the momentum from these strikes. Uh, the filled-in area here represents that this is now actually acting as a blocker as well. So you can see it won't come here, and this would be like... So something like this, um, you know, an elastic collision uh, for... Elastic momentum collision with, with a blocking radius. You could use this for like a, I don't know, like a pool table kind of billiard ball system. Um, so that, you know, they can't end up on top of each other, but, you know, they can still, uh, still collide. Now this, um... This is, I believe, an inelastic collision. So, if you know anything about that, it basically means that you know while momentum is still conserved, the uh, velocity is not the kinetic energy is dissipated. And you can set the uh, co coefficient of restitution to get either fully elastic, not elastic, or somewhere in between. Um, I still have the blocker on for this one, but now I don't. I don't. Or no, it's a smaller blocker inside. Uh, but you can see it's still pushing me along with these inelastic collisions. Uh, and this is just putting it all together. So now we've got the blocker here, we've got a gravity well with an eye of the storm, a full radius, and everything else. Uh, it still works, and so do all of these, you know, box colliders here. Uh, and that's it. I mean, you can combine this together with all sorts of junk and, you know, get all kinds of crazy crap going like the Enigma at the beginning with the full three-dimensional uh, gravity. So, I don't know. I put a lot of effort into this thing. I don't know if it's great, but uh, I think it might be useful. So I'm curious to see what people can put, uh, figure out with it. Uh, I'm going to put it up with my bare-bones repository, and, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully we get some neat games out of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching.